Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are still in chapter 10, actually chapter 10.4, and this time we're going to talk about heat and changes of state. So we begin with something called a phase change diagram. This is not a phase diagram, this is a phase change diagram. And this is what they typically look like. So let me just show you what's going on. What we're doing here is we're showing you the increasing temperature along the y-axis. And then along the x-axis would be as time goes by. So that would be time. And what we're showing here is if temperature is increasing, absorbed uh, energy is being absorbed. So as the temperature is increasing, whatever this substance is, would be absorbing energy. So if you look here at this little bottom here, we have something at this point would exist as a solid. And as the temperature is increasing, it's absorbing energy until it reaches its melting point. And at its melting point, what happens is the temperature, you'll notice, remains constant. So you might ask yourself, why is that taking place? Well, what's happening is energy is still being absorbed, but the energy, instead of increasing the temperature, the energy is causing the phase change. So you remember, in order for, let's look at water, for instance, in order for water to go from being ice to being a liquid, it has to have enough kinetic energy to break apart from the other water molecules. Remember, water is attracted to itself. So in order for it to go from being a solid, where it's in a fixed position, to being a liquid where it can flow, it has to have enough kinetic energy. And remember, temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy. So in this case, what's happening is potential energy is really what's changing. And what's happening is the molecules are getting enough kinetic energy to break apart from one another. So it's absorbing energy, but that energy is going to make it from a solid where the uh, molecules are in a fixed position to being a liquid where they are independent and able to flow. So the temperature remains constant until every last bit of the solid turns to a liquid. At that point, it continues to absorb energy, only now it's a liquid, and as it absorbs energy, its temperature goes up. So just like if you were in a really cold place and you could have ice at negative 50 degrees, when it would reach zero, where ice melts and turns to water, it would stay at zero. And then if I continued to add heat to it, the temperature would go up. And so I would see the temperature increasing until the liquid, and that's what we have at this point, a liquid, until it reaches its boiling point. And for water, that's 100 degrees C. And at that point, again, you'll notice it becomes flat, and that's because the energy that's absorbed is causing the liquid molecules to be able to escape their attraction from one another and go from liquid to gas. So again, the temperature remains constant till every last bit of liquid is converted to gas. And then at that point, it's a gas and it absorbs energy as it is absorbing um, energy. It has an increase in temperature. So let's talk about these phase changes. We'll start with melting and freezing. When a substance melts or freezes, the temperature of the system will remain constant until the phase change is complete. So if we're talking about water, the temperature remains constant during the phase change. Here you would have your solid ice and at zero, where ice typically melts, you will have a mixture of ice and water, but that temperature will remain at zero. So what that means for our purposes, just so you know, if you have a cold drink in the summer, your iced tea or whatever, or your uh, lemonade, as long as there's an ice cube in it, the temperature will remain at zero. But once the last bit of ice melts, then the temperature will start to increase. So this means that melting ice has a temperature of zero, not lower, not higher, and that the temperature will begin to rise when all of the ice has melted. 
And this also means that freezing water, if it's releasing energy, has a temperature of zero, not lower, not higher, and the temperature will begin to drop after all of the water has turned to ice. And there's our ice crystals. So again, temperature it will remain constant during the phase, cha phase change. So again, here we're talking about ice and water. If you are increasing in temperature, it would be going from ice to water. If the temperature is decreasing and you're releasing energy, it would go from water to ice. So now let's talk about boiling and condensing. When a substance boils or condenses, the temperature of the system remains constant. It does not change until that phase change is complete. So in the case of boiling, this means that boiling water has a temperature of 100 degrees C, not higher, not lower. The temperature will only begin to rise when all the water is boiled away into steam. So I always make this example, it sounds terrible, but if I had a choice between having someone throw boiling water on me or hitting me with steam, I would always take boiling water. I don't want to take either, but I would always take boiling water because I know the boiling water is at 100 degrees C, whereas somebody could hit me with a hose of steam and that steam could be at 1000 degrees C. So again, if it's boiling, we know the temperature is 100. What that means is that when water is condensing, going from gas to liquid, the temperature would be 100 degrees C, not higher the temperature would begin to fall once all of the steam has condensed. And so again, in terms of condensation that you see on your, for instance, ice water with a lemon in it in the summer, that's water vapor that's in the air. It encounters the cold surface and it condenses. So again, here is my uh, phase change diagram for water again. So again, you'll notice here at this flat portion that's at 100 degrees C, that corresponds to the boiling point of water. So we're going from liquid water, and that's what we call water in its liquid phase, it's water. And then during the phase change between um, water and gas, and for water we call it gas phase steam. Again, what's going to happen here is the temperature remains constant if it's absorbing energy until all of the water has turned to steam, at which point, if it's continuing to absorb energy, the temperature goes up. And if you're going in the reverse direction, where it's steam condensing to water, again, you have this flat portion where the phase change is taking place. So that is all for today. This is Miss Augustine. I'm going to back this up for a second and point out that in the next chapter, chapter 11, we're going to actually do some calculations. We're going to calculate things like how much energy it takes to melt ice or how much energy is released when water freezes, how much energy it takes to take water from zero to 100 degrees, how much energy it takes to turn water into steam, and how much energy it takes to heat up steam as well. So this is Ms. Augustine signing off.